Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's assembly, where today we will celebrate um, uh, the first day of Black History Month. We'll, first, we will start with the pledge. Everybody, put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today, let's join the sixth grade science and Spanish classes to celebrate the first day of Black History Month. Uh, during, di uh, during diversity in Black History Month, you will be introduced to influential scientists and Afro-Latino cultural figures who have strived to make the world a better place. I now hand it off to the sixth grade. Thank you for joining the sixth grade in science and Spanish classes as we celebrate the first day of Black History Month. During diversity in Black history, you will be introduced to influential scientists and Afro-Latino cultural figures who strive to make our world a better place. As science and Spanish teachers, we wanted to make a conscious effort to think critically about Black history, how Black history influences both of our subjects. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. We asked the students a few questions. Why is Black History Month important? Why should influential figures like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. be celebrated? And here are some of their responses. You can also find their words in the Daily Bulletin. We've been dis having discussions about Black history in our science and Spanish classes because during Black History Month, we want to honor and better understand how Black history is American history. The sixth grade science class would like to share with you all the important conversations we've been having about eight influential Black scientists who overcame slavery, racism, and countless other obstacles to break new scientific ground and make this country and the world a better place. Hey, Lawson, how's it doing? What book is that? I'm reading a book called Granville Taylor Woods, the first Black American who was granted 49 patents. What's a patent? A patent is when you put something on the thing you invented so no one can steal the idea. Wow, 49, he must have invented a lot of stuff. Yeah, and not just that, he was the first African American inventor who helped give key ideas to help the development of telephones, streetcars, and more. What's the most important thing he did to improve society? Well, think of it like this. We wouldn't have cell phones and cars and other things if it wasn't for this man. Wow, that's awesome. I want to learn more about him. Hey, Wilder, did you know that George Washington Carver has made over 300 products only based on peanuts? I didn't know that. That's crazy. Tell me more. Well, George Washington Carver was also the first African-American to have a national monument dedicated to him. Wow, I'm impressed. I didn't even know who he was. Did you know that George Washington Carver was also named the Peanut Man, even though he didn't make peanut butter? That's insane. I can't believe how great this man was. Also, I love the name. George Washington Carver's first years were very traumatic. So you're telling me he suffered through life and then became this great? Yup, that's spot on. Oh. Well, that was amazing how he was able to accomplish so much in a miserable condition. Also, if you ask me, I think it's quite funny that he invented almost all of the other peanut products besides peanut butter. These insects would be very young for dinner if we could just trap them. They'll never know and I can eat insects my whole life. Thanks to Charles Henry Turner, we know that that plan will fail. You might be able to catch them for one day, but soon they'll catch on. Wait, but why? They're just dumb insects. Actually, in the 1800s and 1900s, Charles Henry Turner, who was born in 1867, discovered that insects do realize patterns and change 
their behavior based on what they see and feel. He also discovered that bees can see color through many different experiments without a crew, just alone. That's so cool. I didn't know he did so much for the world. Now I know that I can't eat bugs every day, but I'll try something else. Let's go. Yay. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Famous Figures. I'm Ella Nick, and today I'm interviewing Eretzenam Nutakanag, a renowned historian, on our famous figure, Alice Ball. Thank you, Elle, and please call me Eret. So tell me, Eret, who is Alice Ball? Why was she important? I'm glad you asked. Alice Ball was an incredible African-American chemist. She was the first African-American and woman to graduate with a medical science degree in chemistry from the College of Hawaii, now known as the University of Hawaii. Later, she even developed the first injectable leprosy treatment from the oil, from the oil of a tree, a method previously unconsidered. She did this all by the age of 23. Wow, such a young age for a big discovery. What happened to her? Sadly, she died at the young age of 24, but during her brief lifetime, she did not get to see what her discovery did for the world. It was not until years after her death that Ball got the credit she deserved. But what an outstanding achievement. It's astonishing how she accomplished so much in her life. Thank you, Eret. That was Famous Figures, the show where we uncover pioneers from the past. Hello, Gordon. I see that you happen to be a historian. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Not at all. What do you want to know? Since Black History Month is about to commence, I was wondering if you could teach me about James West. What did he accomplish in life? What impacts did he have in our society? You know the part of the microphone that amplifies the voice? He made that. Imagine your concert that you can only hear up until the third row. Imagine not being able to hear your TV speakers, which are just bigger microphones. No more calling your family or friends either, because phones use microphones. Wow, that seems pretty amazing. Oh, I've got to tell you, he invented hearing aids, which really helped many people survive in this world. Wow, James West seems like an amazing person who helped our world enormously. And before this interview, I barely even knew his name. Oh, hi guys. Hey. So what are we going to do? The first thing we're gonna do is read about Black History Month. Okay, I'm excited. We're researching Patricia Bath. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, she's awesome. Okay, let's start by talking about what we already know about her. Sounds great. Let's start. I don't know much about her, but I do know that she was born in Harlem, New York. Did you guys know Patricia Bath was the first African-American to complete an ophthalmology internship and the first female African-American doctor to obtain a medical patent? Hmm, interesting. Did you know she invented the laser faker probe, which uses a system of lasers to remove the auto uh, affected lenses in your eyes and replace it with an artificial lens? No, I didn't, but that's good to know. See, I told you guys this would be fun. She also became the first female faculty member in the Department of Ophthalmology at UCLA's Jules Stein Eye Institute. Wow. wow. Thank you so much, Olivia. See you soon. Maybe next time we can talk about another interesting person. Definitely. Hey, Tyler, you want me to grab my water guns from the shed? Sure, look at the original ones. They have better detail and they have long range. Oh, fun fact, my parents named me after the guy who invented water guns. Who was the guy who invented water guns? His name was Lonnie G. Johnson. He was a former Air Force and NASA engineer who later invented the iconic water gun we use today. Lonnie was born on October 6, 1949 in Mobile, Alabama. His main dream was becoming an inventor and it seemed to play out well. During his childhood, heard it, he created many interesting things like a China berry shooter out of bamboo shoots. As his life progressed, he learned more about technology and inventions in school and during his free time. I'm not sure what gave him the desire to create a toy like this, but I can't complain It's because it's so much fun. How do you know so much about Lonnie G. Johnson? It seems like he was your own father or something. I wish, however, I just searched, researched about him a few days ago for no specific reason. Well, enough talking now. Let's start spraying.
Welcome to Miffany's Talk Show. Today, we are here with the one and only Macy Joseph, the first African-American woman to enter space. Thank you for having me, Miffany. It's a pleasure to be here. Most of the audience is eager to know why you decided to pursue life as an astronaut and who encouraged you and supported you throughout the process. Of course. Well, ever since I even considered becoming an astronaut, my mom and dad were very supportive and encouraged and pushed me to do what I enjoyed. I would spend countless hours at the library reading about the magical wonders of space and astrology. I guess learning about space was like my safe haven. Wow, that's great. What are some of your accomplishments that you are most proud of? Well, on September 12, 1992, I flew into space with six other astronauts aboard the Endeavour on mission STS-47, becoming the first African-American woman in space. I've also won several awards, like the 1988 Essence Science and Technology Award, the, the Ebony Black Achievement Award in 1992, and Montgomery Fellowship from Dartmouth College in 1993. In 1992, the Macy Jemison Academy, an alternative public school in Detroit, Michigan, was named after me. Wow, that's great. You are truly an inspirational role model to many. You have done so much in life and you should be proud of yourself. Isn't that right, folks? In Spanish class, we have been learning about how Black history and Latin American history overlap and are, in many cases, shared history. We have been studying influential Afro-Latinos and Afro-Latinx figures and all that they have contributed to their communities and the world. The sixth graders will be presenting seven influential Afro-Latinx figures today. Join us in honoring Black heritage and the seven Afro-Latinos whose important contributions to the U.S. and the world should not go unrecognized during Black History Month or throughout the year. Hey Cassidy, we are meeting here today to discuss Perry Thomas. Great, glad to be here. I have a couple questions for you. Sounds good. Ask away. Okay, what did Peary Thomas do to become so famous? Well, author and activist Peary Thomas became one of the first Americans of Puerto Rican descent to win literary acclaim when he published his 1967 memoir, Found These Mean Streets. Okay then, next question. Speaking of the book, what is it about? The book was set in the 1940s slash 1950s in Peary's life in the Spanish Harlem, New York. Cool, next question. Do you know anything about Peary Thomas's childhood? Thomas was born to a Puerto Rican mother and a Cuban father. His childhood neighborhood was in the Spanish Harlem, sec Spanish Harlem section of New York. Nice stuff. If you could meet Peary Thomas, what would you ask him? I would probably ask him if any events in his novel really happened. Cool, last question. How would you describe Peary Thomas in your own words? I would say he was an intelligent author. I think he was also very humble. Wow, thank you so much. Everyone have a jolly day. Sophia, Katie, you there? Hey, Katie. Hey, what? Are you ready? For what? Celia Cruz. She was the Latin singer of the 20th century. Born October 21st, 1925, she died July 16th, 2003. Her mother's name was Catalina Alfonso and her dad's was Simon Cruz. She was famous for singing the 80s, called herself Celia de la Correa Cruz Alfonso. Long stage name, shorter would be better. But for her, that doesn't do. Um, she earned two Grammys, one of them including the Latin Award. She was exiled from Cuba, meaning she was kicked out for some political reasons. She once had said, singing is my life. It always has been my life. It'll always be my life. Even though she's no longer living in her grave, she will always be singing. That's all you need to know about Celia Cruz. Hi, Dash. Hi. Do you know who Jose Celso Barbosa is? Of course I do. Is he the one politician and doctor? Yes. Also, Jose Celso Barbosa was one of the first Puerto Ricans and people of African descent to receive a medical degree in the US. Very cool. He was born in Baymont, Puerto Rico, which makes him Puerto Rican. His family was of African descent. Yeah, did you also know that he spent the rest of his life leading the movement for, for Puerto Rico's incorporation as an autonomous, autonomous 
unit within the United States. Very interesting. I never knew that. One of Barbosa's famous quotes states, Black, black, black. I am proud of being a Negro, nor have I ever tried to beg tolerance from anyone. Superiority is not proved by color, but by the brain, by education, by willpower, by moral courage. That quote is very powerful. Thank you for sharing with, with me. My pleasure. Thanks for listening. See you later. Hello, today we have famous historian Alp Simpson talking about a famous historic figure, Gwen Phil. Welcome, Alp. Thank you for being here today. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. What makes Gwen Phil such a renowned figure? She was a TV newscaster and a journalist. She was also the first African American to host a nationally televised U.S. public affairs program with Washington Week in Review. So cool. So, when was Gwen Phil born? She was born on September 29, 1955. Where was Gwyneth born? She was born in Queens, New York City. Did Gwyneth have any siblings? Yes, she was the fifth of six children. Wow, that's so cool. Where is Gwyneth descended from? Her father was of Panamanian and Barbadian descent. Awesome. Thank you all for telling us so much about Gwyneth you're welcome. Bye. Bye. Veronica, Sienna, you there? Hey, Sienna. Hi. I heard you love to dance and to act. Yes, I do. Me too. Have you ever heard of Sylvia Del Villard? No, who is she? She was a celebrated Afro Puerto Rican activist, dancer, choreographer, and actress. That's so cool, but what did she do? Well, in 1971, Del Villard released a press release criticizing racist casting practices in television and the limited opportunities for black actors and actresses. She also criticized the ongoing use of blackface in television and theater. Wow, I never knew that. Yep, isn't she awesome? Yeah, I learned a lot. Thanks for sharing. Hasta luego. Hi, Hudson. What are you reading? I am reading a poem called Song of the Simple Truth. Who wrote it? Julia de Burgos. I heard she's a famous poet. Yeah, the poem I am reading right now is one of her first poems. She wrote more than 200, and these poems are artistic accomplishments. For, for the first time, her poems have appeared in a complete edition in two languages, English or Spanish. Cool. What does she write about? She wrote mostly about independence and stood up for civil rights. When and where was she born? She was born in Puerto Rico on February 17th, 1914. Oh, and one fun fact, she went to a school called University of Puerto Rico. Thanks for telling me about her. I might read one of her poems someday. You're welcome. See you next time. Hey, Rafi, what book are you reading? I just read a book about an Afro-Latino. Oh, wait, what? Oh, awesome. I'm reading about an Afro-Latino named Arturo Schomburg. Do you Arturo Schomburg, the famous historian, writer, and activist? Yeah, him. Do you know that Arturo Schomburg was a Puerto Rican, African, and German descent? Wow. Didn't he also research and raise awareness of the great contributions that Afro-Latinos and African-Americans have made to society? Yeah, you're right. Look, there's a famous quote in here about him. There's the one about... Is the one that says we need a historian and philosopher to give us with a trenchant pen the story of our forefathers and let our soul and body with the phosphor and light brighten the chasms that separates us. We should cling to them just as blood is thicker than water. Yeah, there's also one the modern school without cinematic lectures. Turns out many graduates who lack retention. No senior has the sound of the word left their teacher's lips. The subject has been forgotten. Super interesting, man. Thanks for talking about him with me. I have to go. See you later. Yeah, bye. Celebrations like Martin Luther King Jr. Day 
in Black History Month give us the opportunity to reflect on how far we've come and how far we still need to go as a community. By looking to our past, we can learn from and follow the examples of the trailblazers who inspire us to carry the torch of freedom and equality into the future. Muchas gracias for joining our assembly today. We look forward to celebrating Black history for the month of February and for the rest of the year. Any announcements? Adults who have announcements can feel free to unmute themselves. That was fantastic. Thanks for sharing everybody. Sixth graders, you did a gorgeous job presenting. Really enjoyed that. Important to hear the contributions of, of all Americans. Loved it, thank you. Any other announcements? I will just say one more time, a reminder, and I'll probably be reminding you throughout the year, but please send your yearbook pictures to the yearbook website by clicking on the button on the resource board. There's a little camera icon there. Have You can do it and your parents can do it. And you can upload yearbook worthy pictures to that place. So I look forward to seeing what you would like to see in the yearbook. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and we can sing the Berkeley Hall song together. Sorry, let me share the audio as well. All right. Thank uh -huh. 